The Spanish flu, which began in 1918, is one of the largest pandemics in modern history that caused an estimated 50 million deaths. The reason why it's called the Spanish flu is that during World War I, the sides needed to hide potentially significant military information. Therefore, the warring parties refrained from disclosing much information about the pandemic. However, the Spanish press openly stated that many Spanish citizens had died due to the outbreak in May and June of 1918. Although 50 million people may not seem like a large number compared to the current world population, it is important to remember that the world's population was approximately 2 billion at the time of the pandemic. It can be said that 500 million people were infected with the Spanish flu, and this number is equivalent to one-third of the world's population at that time. Considering that not every country kept records and that the numbers varied, it is known that 12 to 17 million people died in India. This number was known to be 5% of India's population at the time. Additionally, it is known that 210,000 people were infected and approximately 20,000 people died in Finland, about 34,000 people died in Sweden, approximately 23 million people were infected and 390,000 people died in Japan, and 38,000 people in Samoa died, about a quarter of the population, in just two months. In 1918, during the peak of the pandemic in the United States, approximately one-third of the population was infected, which was around 105 million people, and approximately 675,000 people died. In Brazil, including the country's president at the time, 300,000 people died. The fact that the Spanish flu occurred during World War I made the situation much worse. The outbreak was an absolute death sentence for soldiers living in trenches under extremely difficult conditions. There were no vaccines or medicines to treat patients during this pandemic, which occurred approximately 100 years ago. We know that some countries implemented rules such as wearing masks, quarantine, and social distancing to resist the disease. However, these measures were applied too late or insufficiently. The pandemic quickly spread in North America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Brazil, and the South Pacific. With the influence of inadequate health services at that time, death rates increased dramatically. Another problem of the period was the movement of people in armies and ships due to the war, which was another factor that greatly affected the spread of the pandemic. An interesting aspect of the disease was that, unlike previous outbreaks, it could easily kill not only very young and old individuals, but also those aged between 20 and 40. At the beginning of the symptoms were frightening elements such as lack of oxygen, shortness of breath, and high fever. Such a strong epidemic brought to mind the possibility of chemical weapons for the First World War states. Some parties thought that the epidemic was a biological weapon attack by Germany. The epidemic occurred in three waves and the second wave was the most deadly. The 13-week period between September and December 1918 was the most fatal part of the disease. During this period alone, it was reported that 195,000 American citizens died. Compared to the First World War, the number of American soldiers who died was around 116,000. Individual funerals became impossible at the peak of the crisis, and most of the deceased were buried in mass graves. The Spanish flu also caused significant social and economic damage. Disruption of trade led to major problems such as the death of many qualified individuals. In addition, the illness and death of people's loved ones have created a significant psychological trauma. The Spanish flu epidemic was a destructive event that changed the course of history. It showed the importance of public health preparedness, scientific research, and international cooperation in the fight against infectious diseases. One of the most important lessons learned from the Spanish flu epidemic was the need to be prepared for public health. Many countries established strong public health systems that included disease monitoring networks, laboratory capacity, and rapid response teams. Another lesson from the Spanish flu epidemic was the need for scientific research. The pandemic triggered an unprecedented scientific effort to understand the virus, develop diagnostic tests, and search for treatments. This research laid the foundation for modern virology and immunology and led to the development of numerous life-saving vaccines and antiviral drugs. Today, the world continues to invest in scientific research to better understand viruses, develop vaccines, and improve treatments. Finally, the Spanish flu epidemic emphasized the importance of international cooperation. 
The virus did not respect borders or nationalities, and the epidemic could only be fought through global cooperation. Today, global efforts continue to prevent and control infectious diseases through organizations such as the World Health Organization, WHO, and initiatives such as the Global Health Security Agenda. Major epidemics such as the Spanish flu have taught us important lessons about combating and controlling infectious diseases. Based on these lessons, we are now able to fight more comprehensively. We hope this video has been informative and helpful for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. See you in the next video.